Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are San Diego. Nolan Arenado and the Rockies in town for three. The El Toro native having another all-star year. Silver slugger and a gold glove winner a season ago. And the pitching matchup tonight. Left-handers Drew Pomerantz, the former Rocky, played three years up in Denver. And Chris Russon gets his sixth start. The southpaw for the Colorado Rockies. As we welcome you to beautiful Petco Park on this Friday night with Mark Grant, Dick Kenberg, uh, you know, the Del Mar Fair starts uh, yes. tonight, but we got something going here. We maybe no Ferris wheels and carousels, but it, based on what's happened the last couple of nights, there's going to be a lot of action. There is a lot of going round and round the bases, kind of like yeah. a carousel. And you know what? It all starts at the top of the order with John Jay, don't you think? Oh, my. John Jay, nine hits in two games? Unbelievable. Back on Wednesday night, four for six. Last night, five for six. Versus left-handers, he's hitting 377. How can this be? Well, he uses the middle part of the field. He keeps that front shoulder and hip tucked in there, and he takes the ball where it is pitched. 429 average, two doubles, a home run, and four RBIs the last nine games. Dick, not too many prototypical leadoff hitters out there, but the Padres right now to get him on base, score some runs early, and take their chances that way. Hey, he's now hiked his average up over 300, and tonight it's Drew Pomerantz trying to rally from his only bad outing of the season. He looked at the altitude in Denver against these Rockies last time, and he just laughed in its face. Five solid innings, four hits, two runs. Why? Being aggressive with the fastball in. You have to pitch in aggressively in Colorado. Not afraid to throw that curveball as well. The curveball doesn't break, not for Drew Pomerantz. He threw some nasty ones in the Mile High City, and it paid off. Hopefully, it play comes uh, t again tonight. He's right up there in the league and strikeouts per innings pitch, and of course, ERA, and one of the toughest uh, pitchers to hit against, third toughest in the National League. Well, last night, a historic collapse by the San Diego Padres as they blew a 10 run lead. They had once enjoyed a 12 2 advantage. Well, What's next? Melvin Upton will give us his insights when we come back.
about to get underway. But first, by all accounts, last night's loss was a tough one. But today in the clubhouse, the mood was light and guys very much willing to put last night's loss behind them. I had a chance to catch up with Melvin Upton, who had this to say about reconciling the loss. Wash it out, move on. Uh, you know, things, things happen in baseball you can't quite put your finger on. And uh, yesterday was one of those days, so um, yeah, we'll... Um, Wash that out, forget about it, and uh, get ready for the Rockies. Melvin also added he had never seen a loss like last night's. He said he had been on the other side of lopsided losses like that and comebacks, but never had experienced anything like that. When we return, Colorado Rockies versus the San Diego Padres here at Petco coming up. Sander Drew Pomerantz. That's eight strikeouts now for Pomerantz. Oh, that knuckle curve. He's the third toughest to hit in the National League. Pomerantz comes up with the right stuff. It's game one tonight. Swing and a miss. Wow. And Fox Sports San Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Pinnacle on the Park. Make your new home right here. Visit PinnacleOnThePark.com for details. By Petco, your complete pet store. By Jerome's Furniture, proud sponsor of the best seats in the house. And by the Sony Alpha 7R2, popular photography's 2015 Camera of the Year. Friday night in San Diego, and welcome to beautiful Petco Park. There are the best seats in the house, the Jerome's Furniture Special. Nice, comfortable, big leather seats there right behind home plate. And we're ready for the first of three. The Padres entertaining the Colorado Rockies on the season so far. Six meetings and the Padres won two out of three in Denver and two out of three here. So four and two overall. It's also San Diego Police Department salute night and many of our officers there to greet the Padres as they move to their position on a 67 degree night. The morning uh, overcast has cleared and it was a beautiful afternoon and evening. And a check of the Rockies lineup of Walt Weiss brought to you by Hyundai. And they can hit Look at the 300 averages in that starting nine. Blackman, LeMahieu, and Arenado again having a sensational year, both with the glove and the bat. 
Ryan Rayburn hits cleanup with Trevor Story, the sensational rookie. What an April he had. Mark Reynolds, the veteran first baseman. Gerardo Parra in right field. Nick Cundley, who's been on the disabled list, the former Padre, back in uniform tonight and starting behind the plate for left hander Chris Russell. There's the skipper of the Rockies, Walt Weiss, in his fourth year. His team is five games under 500 at 24 and 29 this year. And with left-hander Drew Pomerantz on the hill, his scouting report is brought to you by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Well, he's got to avoid the big inning, the bad inning. It really wasn't even that bad of an inning. Sure, he gave up a home run, a walk, but it was one bad inning in Arizona that the Diamondbacks dropped a five spot on him. He's got the good fastball and the good curveball command. Hey, if he can pitch in Colorado and be successful, he can do it anywhere. It's kind of like from New York. If you can do it there, you can do it anywhere. There you go. That's a nice lyric. The umpiring crew that uh, will work the three games of the weekend. Paul Emmel behind the plate tonight with Jordan Baker, Toby Bassner, a new uh, man in blue, and Mike Everett, the crew chief over at third. Charlie Blackman settles in the batter's box. Drew Pomerantz, the 6'6", 240-pound left-hander, gets his sign from Derek Norris, and this Friday action is underway. A fastball that just misses. 90 miles an hour on the first pitch from Pomerantz to Blackman, a 302 average on the season with six home runs. He's been on base 28 consecutive games with a hit walk, hit batsman. That is one heck of a streak. Hit 336 during that streak. Oh, Charlie Blackman swinging the bat well. He's using the whole field. They're playing to go the opposite way in the outfield early. And ball three. Well, make that two and one. Okay, Blackman from the bearded clan. Played his college ball at Georgia Tech. Now 29. And it's two and one up high. Part of the failing of Pomerantz and his one bad outing of the season for the Padres, that being in Arizona the last time out, was that the trouble with his control. He walked to uh, six batters. Fly ball lifted the left. Up to knees his back. And there's the first out of the game. And the Padre defense brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. We see Upton and left, John Jay Patrol Center with Kemp in his usual spot right field. Around the horn, Solarte, Ramirez there at shortstop. Rosales gets another go at second, and there's Will Myers, the first, the first baseman. Derek Norris, the catcher. DJ LeMahieu hitting 311. He hit 300 last year, 301. Bench coach Mark McGuire there with the skipper, Andy Green. And a strike on the inside corner, or almost on the corner. And after last night's game, a disappointing loss, the uh, Andy Green and his staff, what were they doing? Well, they were going over the scouting reports, getting prepared for tonight's game. As Melvin Upton Jr. said, you know, you throw it in the wash, you wash it out, and you put it on again today, and you go go to hack it. It's a cliche, but baseball players have to live by by the, the truth of the matter. It's just one mm -hmm. of 162, and it's an awful one. It was a historical collapse by the Padres, but had they uh, had they lost a one nothing it would have been still sure. a no. Big hack by LeMahieu. He's now 27 product of the Detroit area Bloomfield Hills Michigan. Won a gold glove a couple of years ago made himself a pretty good hitter. Mm -hmm. Remember when we were playing Colorado earlier in the season he was down at the bottom of the lineup. Doing a lot of batting eighth. There's that knuckle curve, and LeMahieu doesn't bite. Now they got a pretty good infield in Colorado. They can pick it. And there's a man who's as good as any that's ever played third base, and he's only 25. Just missed. Two and two. You know that one inning we're talking about his last start for Drew Pomerantz in Arizona. Nine Diamondbacks came to the plate. Home run, a walk, a single, a bunt single, a double. And after that, he pretty much settled down. Chopped a third, a very tough play for the third baseman, oh. Solarte, and he turns it over there beautifully. 
on the run side wheels that throw just in time to get LeMayhew. Oh, Jan Hedervis, how do you do it? I was about ready to write in my book infield single, but Salarte on the run, the glove, we swap it. Nice play over to first base. That's beautiful. That's acrobatic. And a nice stretch by Will Myers. Keeping him off base for Arenado, and that's exactly how you want to face Arenado. Arenado last year finished with a 287 record at the plate with 42 homers. The year before, he hit 287. And tonight, in this season, he comes in at 287. Is he consistent? Pretty with consistent. The that's called a strike on the outside edge. One and one. Played up by Remmel. Boy, there's a good looking oh, future yeah. Padre. Game face. Spins that one in at 80 miles an hour, one and two. He can be pitched to. He does have some holes. Pomerantz going soft right there to get ahead one and two. But he's the second hardest National League player to strike out at this point. Span of the Giants, the toughest. Pulled foul past third. Yeah, when you're tough to strike out, you've got good plate coverage. Your foul pitch is off. Wait for the pitcher to come to you. Shorten up that swing and take it the opposite way. As Ryan Rayburn waits on deck. Well, the draft is next week. The June draft. The Padres have three picks in the first round, including number eight. And that takes us to Arenado. If we have a chance to talk about him, we'll have to wait on that. A high fly ball. Upton, he's searching for it. Does he see it? There it is. And oh, that was a major league fly ball. A one, two, three for Pomerantz in the opening frame. Here come the Padres and John Jay. You want to bring a smile to a young child's uh, face? Well, you say it's Christmas time or it's going to be a birthday. You want to see Matt Kemp smile and his eyes get bright? Say Colorado Rockies. <laughs> 40 home runs against the Rockies in his career, third most by an opposing player. And this year he's continued as he has in the past. And we'll see him hit third tonight. Six games against the Rockies, four home runs. First, it's John Jay to take a bow to start this first and he delivers a single back through the middle. Wow, 10 hits now in two games and one at bat. Four hits on the opening game against Seattle and then five last night. Here is the Padres lineup brought to you by Toyota with Jay at the top of the list, then Will Myers and Matt Kemp. John Solarte bats in the cleanup spot in front of Melvin Upton. Derek Norris had three hits last night. He appears to be breaking out of his uh, two-month slump. Now Luxe Ramirez hit seventh, then Adam Rosales. 
Starts at second once again in front of Pomerantz, the pitcher. Myers hitting 275. John Jay is red hot. No, I take that back. He is white hot. There you go. And as Jerry Reed said, when you hot, you hot. When you not, you not. You not. Yeah, that not part isn't good. Chris Russin, the left-hander, has one win this year. This is only his sixth start. In his previous five, his ERA six and a half. And opposing hitters hitting 373 against Russin. That should be a good sign for San Diego tonight. If he's true to form, the Padres are going to get some hits and uh, should score some runs. Well, I think Will Myers is going to get change-ups away. He's going to get breaking balls in. I mean, fastballs out of the zone when Russin is ahead. And we know the power of Will Myers. So let's take a little closer look to Chris Russin. He works for grounders with that changeup and that breaking ball in. So heads up on the infield. And he'll expand late with that fastball or that breaking ball down by the feet with two strikes. High and away at night, 89 miles an hour. Played his college ball in the same university as uh, Padre manager Andy Green at the University of Kentucky in Lexington. Migrated down south from Dearborn, Michigan. A couple of Wildcats there in the picture. Yeah. Good low strike. That little backdoor cut fastball. Russell's not going to overpower you. He's about 86 to 92. Padres have had good success against the Rockies here at home in the last 25, 19 and 6. Way inside. Good play made by Nick Hundley. Good to see Nick Hundley back in uniform. He's been struggling with injuries this year. Was on the DL with a concussion in April and then lost a whole month of May. With the oblique injury, and this is his first game back. Kemp can't wait to get up there. See him salivating? Did you see Matt Kemp foaming at the mouth right there? <laughs> he cannot wait to get to the plate. At full count on Myers. Up the middle. Oh, nice stop by Russ, and he throws the ball away. Jay keeps right on going to third, and the Padres catch a break early. Possible double play ball instead. They get nothing. First and third on the air by pitcher Russin. Well, I don't have to say it, but I will say it. This is exactly what the Padres have to do and capitalize on mistakes. Russin, he just flips it, and whoa, Trevor Story, no chance on that one. He kind of rushed it. We talk about pitchers throwing strikes to the plate. How about to a base? Yes, you have to throw strikes to the bases as well. Not the case there. Not that Russin has it, but some pitchers have the thing, as yes. they call it, where for whatever reason they can't throw from the mound to first base. Remember, that started the whole Clayton Richards of running halfway there and underhanding right. the throw. A lot of pitchers are doing that now. Yep. All right, Kemp, the table set for the man that terrorizes Rocky pitching in his career. Let's see what he can do tonight. Leading the club in home runs with 13 and RBIs, a chance to add to that list. Enfield back, a mild shift. A long high drive to left field, right on cue. Oh my, a bomb from Kemp. Touch them all. A three run shot for Matt Kemp. And the first three men to face Russell come in to score. The Padres take the early lead on Kemp's 14th of the year. He said a lot of long ones, and that's going to be on his list of Ruthians high and long and gone. Matt Kemp is a star. We know that. And he hit that up near the star landing, Estrella landing. That nearly goes right below the big board. High fastball, belt buckle high. 
This one goes a long way. Solarte follows it off. Now let's see where that landed. Take a closer look for a moment. We thought it might hit the scoreboard. The ball's getting bigger. It's coming at you. Look out. Wow. That's a big man's home run. Solarte. Sands coming off the DL, hitting very effectively with a 339 average. 458 feet they measure the home run to left field. Into the shift, and that's LeMayhew playing on the shortstop side to throw out Solarte. So 458, that's very close to the longest ever here. The, well, in fact, it ties the longest home run ever hit at Petco Park. Adrian Gonzalez in 2009 hit one 458. Wow. <laughs> hey, you think they came to the ball yard tonight and think they're you know sitting there that they're going to go home with a souvenir? First pitch all over it. <laughs> Into the back roll wow. of the second deck. Amazing. Well, last night we left the ballpark shaking our heads. In all the games we've seen, did you ever think you'd see the Padres and it never happened in their entire history? Blow a 10 run lead, score 13 runs and not win. Then you come here tonight and the first three men have scored and, and Kemp puts his name right up with Adrian Gonzalez at the top of the longest home run ever hit in Petco Park. High fly ball, shallow in center. LeMahieu goes out. He's calling and he makes the catch. Wow. I am very surprised LeMahieu caught that ball. I mean, that's that's Blackman's ball all the way. So 41 home runs now against the Rockies in his career. Only Bonds and Sosa you know have the, hit more. You know the amazing thing about that list is Bonds and everybody else with the exception of Sosa played in the National League West against the Rockies. Sosa was in the NL Central. Yeah. Now that's going to Rockies territory once and them coming to Chicago once during the season and a la Calle taking him to the street. Good point. Derek Norris. Let's see if he can keep it going. Last night three hits in his first three at bats. Drove in a run scored a couple. Trying to kick that average up to the 200 mark. Ground ball sharply into the hole but look who's there. The gold glove of Arenado to deny a base hit. But a single to Jay. The throwing error by pitcher Russin and Matt Kemp with a mammoth home run. 458 deep 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 to left.
the top of the second, while Drew Pomerantz knows that he is saddled with the task of being efficient with his pitches and going as deep as he possibly can into this game, as there are four members of the bullpen who have already pitched two consecutive days in a row. But he's been in this position before. If you look back to this last road trip in Arizona, he was able to go five innings after Cesar Vargas was only able to go an inning and two-thirds. And then back to San Francisco, that was the day after the 17-inning game against the Dodgers here, in which the bullpen was taxed as well. But as a highlight note here, guys, Christian Friedrich available in the pen, as today is his bullpen day, and he will be available later tonight. Well, that, thank you very much, Julie. That it just shows you how a manager has to think ahead. Sure. Know, what happens if he doesn't go deep in the game? But Pomerantz knows the onus is on him tonight to try to get it six and hopefully seven. Hey, as a fan, you could crack open the paper, you look on the internet, you look at the box scores of every game. You know, it's the bullpen's fried. Pomerantz has got to try to maybe go even eight. Ryan Rayburn, a shallow fly to right, and Kemp is there for the first out. So three of the first four outs for the Rockies against Pomerantz fly balls to the outfield. Here's Trevor Story, a 23 year old from Irving, Texas, who just tore up the National League in his first week in the bigs. He now has 15 home runs. He's settled back to a 261 average. He's still with that 38 uh, RBI's third best in the National League behind Arenado and Chris Bryant. Strike one. He also leads the National League and striking out 76 times. Bounces that one one and one. Well, they're still buzzing at Petco that home run by Matt Kemp. Spins that one around the outside corner two and one. Rockies come to town they have lost seven of their last ten. They had a soft home stand uh, two and five. They'll play three here and then three at Los Angeles against the Dodgers on this trip. Fly ball again shallow. Kemp has to hustle and runs it down. Four outfield flies. Well between innings we can't exactly tell you what's going on but Arenado is really upset with Nick Hundley. You can read fastball in there and apparently he's talking about you feed the Kemp a first pitch fastball you're going to get exactly what you Kemp uh, offered a long distance home run. Hey, you'd like to see a player that involved. Hey, eh, I tell huh? you what he's passionate about his craft and he wants to win especially with the way the things have been going for the Rockies. They started off nicely and it's been almost a template for this Rockies team. They start off well, then all of a sudden you get towards the summer, kind of cool off a little bit. Next thing you know, six games, eight games, 12 games, 15 games. This team's going to give up runs. Sure, they're going to hit. They're like the first or second every single year, but their ERAs usually 14th or 15th in the league. Yep, they're number two this year, 274 team batting average. Two outs to Mark Reynolds is having a good season the veteran first baseman hitting over 300. Here's a look at the NL West as we start play tonight with the Giants uh, with a handsome five and a half game lead over the Dodgers eight and a half from Colorado Arizona ten and a half and the Padres twelve and a half back. Here's why you don't count the Dodgers out. Five and it's early broken back ground ball two hops. To the third baseman, Solarte throws low, and Myers can't dig it out. Air to the third baseman, uh, Solarte. Well, the error helped the Padres to get an extra run in the last of the first. Plenty of time. Should have thrown a strike over to first base. The crow hop it just doesn't get it there, and those in-between hops are tougher for first baseman off the heel of the glove. Yeah, he didn't even make it to the infield dirt with yeah, the throw. That's a throw that has to be made. But the Dodgers five and a half out and they're still hovering around 500. Hey if things aren't going that well for the Dodgers right now and they're still around 500 watch out They'll, they may hit a streak to where they're going to be really doing well. So that's why the Dodgers kind of you still have to be concerned about them. 
They're coming back from losing three out of four against the Cubs. The hitter is Gerardo Parra. Bunts in the air, foul. 28 year old outfielder from Venezuela. Good outfielder, terrific throwing arm. And I tell you what, foul balls and souvenirs ought to be sponsored by a toothpaste company. <laughs> You see a lot of dentures yeah. every time someone comes. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. A good marketing man would go to work on yeah. that. Huh? Hey Colgate. <laughs> hey Crest. Let's check uh, this play out. One handed grab with the social sparkler on yeah. the left and the grab with the right. He didn't even spill the little suds <laughs> on that one. He, well done. One and one. Pours in a fastball at 93. Well, here's my only concern with any type of error. How many more pitchers, pitches, does a pitcher have to throw to get out of the inning? Because he should be out of the inning right now. Drew Pomerantz. So now this will be four yep. more pitches. This one coming up. Those four out innings can be painful. Outside, so it'll be five pitches. You know, you take into account a pitcher warming up before a game. What do you think? 40 to 60 pitches, maybe? Tosses? I mean, throwing a ball, you know, you got to get loose, then you got to get hot, then you got to finish it off. Then you take your warm up pitches. That's eight in between innings. And you talk about the game pitches. I mean, it adds up. And throws over to first base for that matter. Right. And the count full three and two that'll send uh, Reynolds off on the pitch. I mean you're talking give or take 200 pitches 200 throws. Whether it's soft or all out. On the night for a big league starter. Reynolds with his lead Myers playing behind him. He takes off the pitch is outside so an error and a walk. So that's six more pitches and now has to face another batter. So your points well taken. That error does more than just put a man on base. A look at the keys to the game tonight, fans, brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Well, continue Petco advantage for the San Diego Padres. We mentioned it earlier, 19 and 6 at Petco for the Padres in September of 2013. Keep that up. They're off to a good start right now. And keep crushing the rocks. I'm referring to Matt Kemp. You mentioned it. 40 career home runs versus the Rockies at most home runs all time versus this franchise Matt Kemp now with 41 home runs Mr. Grant you've moved up into a chair in the front row of the classroom tonight <laughs> that's in for a strike Nick Conley is hit well against the Padres back in uniform tonight his first game in a full month he's only had 44 at bats. Inside. Two seventy three the average for a man with twelve hits and forty four trips a couple of home runs. And an error in a walk and he represents the tying run here in the top of the second. Check swing and he went around. Played umpire. Emil had called it a strike, and first base umpire Baker confirms. That looked like a sharp breaking ball from Pomerantz. He'll flip one up there, and then he'll have that power curve ball. That looked like it there. Swing and a miss, strike three. Went back to that knuckle curve, and the big strikeout strands two. Rockies, we go to the bottom of the second, the Padres, 3 0.
Dante Ramirez will lead off the bottom of the second inning. He's in a five game hitting streak and even better than that in the last nine games hitting at a 353 pace and three of his home runs all three for the season. We talked about it last night how Alexei Ramirez when he's with the White Sox all those years over the course of his career pretty much a pull hitter to left field left center field and those home runs to the pull side. He's got that in the back of his head now. Hey if you get a chance to pull a baseball pull it show some power. So he's raised his average in the nine games from 231 up to 250. He'll be followed by Adam Rosales and the pitcher Pomerantz here in the bottom of the second. 2 and 0. Boy, Russin is he's just out on that mound. He's like just playing a good old game of catch with Nick Huntley. Not overpowering, just kind of flipping it up there. It looks like it's very hittable, doesn't it? Pulls it back and takes ball three. Well, the Padres uh, after Sunday were last in the National League in hitting, and just in the last four games they've Raise their team batting average up to the point where they're they've moved up four places in the league and they've scored runs in 10 of the last 18 innings. They're scoring in the first inning too. That's it scored only two was the high coming into the series with the Mariners. That's in the gap and it's going to get through. Par unable to get to it. Let's see how far Ramirez wants to go. Whoa! Put on the brakes as that relay came in and he'll settle for a leadoff double and that's the right play. With one out, you might gamble on the yes. triple, but with no one out, the double is just fine. And remember what I said about him going to the pull side for power, three home runs? How about Alexei going to right center field? We know he's got the arm. He also has the hammer in his hand for the double. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Barra got a bad break on the ball. He came in on the ball, then had to angle back and couldn't get to it. And I think he was playing so shallow in right field that, that yeah, he couldn't get to that ball that was hit so sharply. All right, here's situational hitting for Adam Rosales. Try to get that man over to the third. You want to get him home, but at least to third with one out. Takes high. Done a good job filling in third base, second base the last uh, week or so. He'll tie into one now and then, and a couple of his home runs have been long jobs. Low 2 and 0. Yeah, you miss middle end to Adam Rosales and something soft. He's going to turn on it. He's going to spin. He, he put one in the uh, the second deck there yeah. in left field. Former Western Michigan University Bronco. Fly ball right field. Parr's got a good arm. Ramirez tags. Beware. Here comes the throw, and it's offline. And Ramirez goes to third. He's got a powerful arm up there. He just was off the mark. I was thinking the same thing, Dick. As soon as Alexei tagged, and then you could see it from our vantage point, him running, and then the, the ball out of the hand of Para. If that was online, it would have been a different story, possibly. So here we go. You saw Love it. go. Arenado caught the ball with the Ramirez still a couple of steps from third. So a chance to pick up a added run with a three nothing lead. You know, he was upset with himself. Didn't hit the strike zone. So let's see if Pomerantz and the Padres have a little safety squeeze in mind. Infield draws in very tight. They're in on the edge of the grass and on the grass. Swing and a miss. Pomerantz has two hits this year. 19 tries and one RBI. You know I love the safety squeeze because it's the responsibility of that runner at third base. You can see the trajectory of the ball off the bat. As soon as you see contact that ball going out you are off and running. If you're off and running at that moment there's no way they can make that. Throw to home plate to get you. They have to make the good throw and the tag. It's not a force play. The ball in the strike to Pomerantz. Chop to first and no chance for Ramirez. Back to first goes Reynolds to the second baseman for the put out. And there's two away. Well, let's look at our cold hard tax brought to you by Clean, Crisp, Coors Light. How about John Jay? 
He's got 10 hits in two games plus the first inning tonight. The Padres record for most hits in the three game span shared by Gonzalez, Guzmanoff, Gwynn, and Mumphrey at 11. And so certainly John Jay, if he has another big night, will pass that list and be the all time producer in three games. That's one of the reasons why he's so successful. He goes to left field when the pitch is in that direction, much like Gwynn. Pulls it last night a double pull to right a lot of his hits right back up the middle. Well the Chief Justice is most definitely swinging that gavel with some authority. It's been fun to watch the last few games. Inside two outs Ramirez at third Padres three Rockies nothing. Runners in scoring position only Steve Piscotty of the Cardinals has a better batting average with men in scoring position. Check swing. Didn't go two and one. Remember going to this game, John Jay batting 377 versus lefties. Well, you can pad that average with that single when he started the game off Russell. Trying to pound him inside, one pitch in the middle of the plate. By third foul, Ramirez ducking for a cover. <laughs> Somebody in that Rockies dugout. You got to charge those, Ramirez. Charge those. That's why it's so important for a third base runner to be in foul territory. We know if the ball hits you, it's a foul ball. Got leveled at two and two. Uh, right back to the mound and uh, Russin takes care of business and the Padres unable to take advantage of Ramirez leadoff double on to the third three nothing for the home team. In left field at Petco Park, and I'm joined now by Todd, who was in the right place at the right time and able to catch Matt Kemp's home run. How did that happen? You know, he just uh, he made a, a huge blast. It came right at me. Uh, it took a while to get here, and you know those uh, those bombs don't come in straight lines. And uh, kind of just uh, went off a finger, hit the wall behind me, hit my back, and fell down on the ground. And uh, fortunately, there's not a lot of competition for it up here. Todd, Todd, you couldn't make the play. You couldn't catch it barehanded. What happened? Uh, next time I'll use two hands, just like you learn in Little League. Big plans for the ball? You know, uh, looks like it'll uh, it'll be staying in my office, perhaps. Uh, I've already gotten a couple offers for it, but not high enough. Not for Matt Kemp's home run ball. Now, as I hear it, this was a clandestine catch. You had a vision of this happening. Tell me, take me through that. You know what? Uh, ironic enough, uh, the inning before this, I just thought, I wonder if I'm going to get a home run ball up here. And uh, but if it happened, it would have to be quite the uh, quite the bomb. And for some odd reason, uh, the next inning, uh, Matt Kemp got up and, and hit a fly ball right to me. I couldn't believe it. 
uh, that it, it, it seemed like I just envisioned it, but you know, never know. I think you should play the lotto tonight, Todd. If 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 I see myself winning, I, I think you're right, but uh, I see myself losing for some reason. <laughs> All right. Well, you already won because you got the home run ball. Congratulations. Congratulations to your family. Guys, nothing like coming to the baseball park and catching a home run ball. Pretty special. That's indeed. Good job, J.A. The uh, ball is worth more than he thinks because that ties Adrian Gonzalez the longest ever at Petco Park. So it's not just an ordinary long home run. It's one of the longest. I bet Matt Kemp might want to have that ball. Here they are Kemp Gonzalez and then Puig uh, 457 the longest ever. There's See how the ball is kind of dented a little bit on the uh, the right side there. <laughs> Hit that ball so hard. Lead off man Charlie Blackman after Russin tried to bunt his way on. Pomerantz took care of that. One out here in the third, three nothing Padres on that three run blast by Kemp. And three and zero oh to Blackman who fly to left his first time. And. If Lays in a strike. DJ LeMayhew next. Three and two. Blackman taken all away. Well, I'm really surprised. Three one a fastball right there that he's not hacking. Ooh, rips that, but it'll go foul down the right field line, but not foul by much. And another good play made by the fan. Use of the old time. <laughs> yeah. That, Bob, look at that. That's uh, circa 1940. <laughs> and you know what? Off the left handed bat, this ball is smoked. It's a great grab. <laughs> Breaking ball. Oh, boy, well, it was good enough to get strike three, but. Pomerantz doesn't get the call from umpire Emil. And a second walk from Pomerantz. And, uh, well, this is going to be easy. Our San Diego fan of the game. Why not? The entire family there. Last row of the second deck in left field. That's great. Isn't that nice? They got their Padre Fedoras there from yesteryear. So Blackman with that walk has now extended his uh, on base mark. To 29 straight to right field, a line drive at Kemp. Oh, that was blistered off the battle of Mayhew. Two out. Played perfectly. Pomerantz hitting his spots. Matt Kemp shading the right field line. I thought when you said Pomerantz hitting his spots, we were talking about our Mike going to all the, you know, all the <laughs> nice little uh, right. uh, eateries and uh, taverns around uh, Petco Park. He does that too, you know. Absolutely. You know, He's got a running is tab. A pump. Yeah, it's a he pump. never pays. <laughs> Put that on my tab, he says. That always sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. That's big time if you can do that. Arenado flying to left his first time. Breaking ball right in the heart of the plate. So last year, 42 homers, 130 runs batted in. He currently leads the National League with 17 homers and 44 RBIs. 25 years young. It's already run three consecutive gold gloves at third. He was the Silver Slugger winner last year. Got the Quinella. You know, Frazier and Trumbo in the American League tied, but Arenado leading the National League. Two strikes the count. Yeah, he's pretty much cor ball. cornered that market on the gold glove at third base. Uh -huh. And you know what? Uh, I think it was after his first one. I, I was talking to Nick Hundley when he was still a Padre, and Arenado won his first gold glove. And it was in like April. We were in Colorado. I said, hey, what do you think of Nolan Arenado? He goes, and this is in April. Just give him the gold glove this year yeah. already. Called him the best player in the league, yeah. too, remember? Yeah. Going to finish my story about him and the upcoming draft, the June draft, next week. And he's not going to let me do it here. That's going to be a swinging bunt. And he's safe at first base. 
So with two outs, Blackman will walk, goes to second on the scratch hit off the bat of Arenado. We'll get that in now. The draft coming up next week. Arenado in 2009, as we watch the base hit again, was picked in the second round, 59th overall. The Padres that year had the third pick. They chose Donovan Tate. He's still at Lake Elsinore. Everett Williams, don't know what happened to him before Arenado. And here are the other players. This, this shows how important the draft is upcoming. Here are the other players in the second round after the Padres made their second pick. Billy Hamilton, Arenado, Trace Thompson, Jason Kipnis, Stephen Matz, DJ LeMahieu, and Patrick Corbin. So they're there and you've just got to find them and the Padres in the past have not been successful. Let's hope that this is a year a whole new regime. A.J. Preller and his uh, scouting departments they've been working feverishly to that board they've got six picks in the first 85 they have more picks than anyone in Major League Baseball so it's going to be an exciting day next Thursday and Friday. High fly ball to left field. That's hit pretty well off the bat of Rayburn, but will stay near the warning path. And tucking it away is Upton, and the Rockies leave two more. The Padres lead by three. Fiery start here on this Friday night, the Rockies and the Padres. And uh, we mentioned the Del Mar Fair starting tonight. You know, they usually have fireworks there. Well, Matt Kemp couldn't make it out to Del Mar, so he just decided he'd do a little pyrotechnic activity himself. Here's Will Myers with Kemp coming up next after Will, who uh, was safe on the air by Russ and the pitcher. And that set the table for Kemp's three run homer after uh, Jay had singled in the first inning. High in the air to center. That'll finally come down and Blackman waiting. Oh. One out. Oh, Will didn't miss that one by much. Well, as Matt Kemp steps up, uh, a short memory will take him back to his first time up. And all the way to the back row of the second deck, tying the longest home run ever hit at Petco Park. He and Adrian Gonzalez to share that power number and uh, he almost hit it above that mm -hmm. Estrella landing he hit it that back wall just below where is that there they are to the left waiting for another one <laughs> that was the perfect swing and a perfect mistake out of the hand of Russell a lofty fastball just above the belt and a nice easy swing from Matt Kemp First pitch this time wasn't a fastball, nor is that one. 2 0 against Russin, uh, limited uh, 
numbers, but Jay and Kim, Norris, Solarte, Upton have all had good success. Yeah, maybe pitching around him this time. Uh, a little tentative uh, this time around. You know he's swinging if this one's in his wheelhouse. Not good enough. Crowding him just on the inside corner. Finally yeah. flashing out the signs. Fastball inside. Yep. And that ball is drilled to left field and caught. Mm. Rayburn able to go toward the line and snare that ball. It was it was hit hard. A lot of topspin. Just got on top of it a little bit too much. It's another fastball 3 1 as you said Dick fastball in Matt gets the hands in and just a little bit below the sweet spot. And along with that top spin as you mentioned. And uh, nobody's going to hear the wrath of Arenado next half inning in the dugout after that line drive. So two outs to Jan Solarte who grounded the second his first time. Shift on. Eight for 18 batting right handed Solarte so far this year. And a couple home runs, two of his three as a right handed hitter. Taps that one. And Russin fields and tags. And it's an easy one, two, three inning for Chris Russin. We've completed three at Petco and the Padres lead by three. Nothing uh, Padres and before the game tonight Henry Ford of Fox Sports San Diego our GM and president a $10,000 check to the San Diego Police Foundation. Shelly Zimmerman the San Diego police chief there to accept the honor. What a terrific police chief we have and a little flyover by one of the helicopters and she's got a pretty good left handed delivery. Fires a strike in there. Huh? Yeah, go for the outside corner against the right handed hitter. <laughs> That's nice. I especially like the Tommy Bahama shirt that Mr. Fowler was wearing out there. It's a good look. Yeah, to try to get, you know, get a couple of dozen of those. And sure. Workers, huh? Especially when we go on Hawaii when they give us that vacation <laughs> after the season Fox Sports does. As Mark Swinney joins Mark Grant and uh, yours truly. With I love that. With us. I love that vacation they send us on. Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. It's really nice. Nothing like a you know. A nice lay. You know? How about when he puts on the hula the, the skirt? No, I'm not about You're that. You're unbelievable. Not about how about that. I bet you wouldn't even <laughs> hug him, man. Oh, I love hugs. I know you do, but not not with the hula. Deal. I'm not going to do it. Mark tonight. and I hug all the time. Yeah. yeah. But not. I say I know you hug, but not in the hula. I mean, you don't do that. Uh, that uh, you know that uh, hula dance? Yeah. 
I love the hula dance. So the Rockies here in the top of the fourth inning set up Story, Reynolds, and Para. Only one hit off Drew Pomerantz, and that was the swinging bunt single by Arenado. Story fly to right his first time. How about that home run by Matt Kemp? That was a long one. Looks like he had a little bad intentions mm. on that swing. Oh, good cut there by Story. And how about Arenado yelling in the dugout? Yeah. Why would you throw Matt Kemp a fastball? That That's was a pretty. It's pretty yeah. interesting. Absolutely. The emotions of this game. You're getting in that phase of the year where you're starting to get a little more emotion. Saw it in the Texas Rangers series against Toronto. Now you're starting to see that around baseball. Swing and a miss, strike three. And Story, who leads the league in striking out, that's number 77 for him. That was the curveball. Oh, the knuckle curveball, the 12 6 rotation, and that one is off the table. And a good start here for Drew Pomerantz in the fourth. But very aggressive with that pitch. He was that way in. Colorado last time against the Rockies and how about this high strikeout percentage nine innings by left handers Drew Pomerantz in Padres history how about Sterling Hitchcock oh. right underneath that what a championship series he had against Atlanta in 1998 yeah he was lights out he was it? he had the split finger going yeah. Mark Reynolds safe on the air by Solarte throwing error in the second inning check swing foul. You know, I s you said a good point on the pregame show about Drew Pomeranz just showing the changeup, mm -hmm. and it, and obviously he's had a lot of success with the fastball combination of the fastball and curveball. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a it's very important to show a different look. It's not necessarily just throwing it. You have to f have a good feel for it. But you don't see that too much from Drew Pomeranz. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Reynolds is punched out by Pomeranz. That's his third tonight. Now you make a good point Mark because the old adage is you know on the curveball if it ain't broke why fix it right. I mean he's doing just fine with the fastball location of the curveball. But you're right. And I'm not saying Drew Pomerantz needs to but like you said to have that extra tool in the toolbox a change up to go along with the 92 93. I mean, that's a devastating that's pitch. so many people will say hey why change something. It's right. not necessarily changing something. It's you have to give that effect because during these scouting reports and these meetings so many people say hey he's a three pitch pitcher. Well. If he's a two pitch pitcher and he doesn't show that fastball command then you could start sitting on the curveball which makes it a little bit yeah. easier. I'm not saying it's easy to hit that curveball but it, it makes it easier and I think that's what you you have to take in consideration and Pomerantz does he owns a changeup. He does throw a changeup. He just doesn't throw it that often. Para punches that one foul and the count goes two strikes on the outfielder of the Rockies with two away no one on here in the fourth. And Pomerantz one pitch away from striking out the side here in the fourth. That's off the mask of Norris. That mask is taking a beating this oh. year. You can see how that cage is bent a little bit on the his his left side yeah. our right when he puts that grill up on his head there you can see he, he told me after one foul ball right off the grill it actually bent the cage in a little bit. Wow. Gotta watch your chicklets. Yeah. Swing and a miss he does strike out the side. Pomerantz who's averaging more than a strikeout per inning gets Trevor Story. Mark Reynolds and Gerardo Para one two. Three.
uh, Fox Sports game break. Jerks and Profar in because of Odor's, Odor's uh, penalty being suspended for the fight in Toronto, and he clubs a home run, and the Rangers beat the Mariners. That's the first of three, a battle of first place. They were tied going in. The Rangers get the first leg of the weekend series. Think about Jerks and Profar, and if he didn't get injured and had sustained injuries, you would probably not see Rugnet Odor playing second base. That's how talented that young man is. You know, Odor is eligible to return to the Rangers on Saturday. And in, during that stint, 10 for 28, a 357 average for Profar. That's taking advantage of the opportunity, Sure Joe. is. Nice to have that kind of depth. You say yo? I did. Melvin up, then popped to second. Works the count to 2-0 and oh against Chris Russin, a 29-year-old looking for his second win of the season. Misses again. Upton Norris and Ramirez. Three right handed batters against the lefty here in the Padre fourth inning. And a four pitch walk, lead off walks usually spell trouble for the opposing pitcher. And that's his first free pass tonight. Makes up Derek Norris. Yeah, we're concerned about the news out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, that uh, the great champion Muhammad Ali, very seriously ill in a hospital. Uh, oh. One report had him on life support. He's battled back out of uh, many a tough situation, taking the eight count, comes right back, punching, and let's hope that that'll be the case uh, for the 74 year old champ tonight. Oh. Norris takes a strike. And our friend Tim Shanahan out in the uh, Rancho Santa Fe has written a wonderful book about his relationship with Ali. It goes back some 40 some years. Very close relationship between uh, Shanahan, who was just a, a kid out of Marquette up in Milwaukee meeting uh, Ali. Did you see that movie, Ali? Yes, I did. What'd you think of it? Well, I had a chance to do a couple of his fights yeah. during his championship years. and. You know, sports films are tough to do. I mean, because it's just, it's so hard for actors to be athletes. We've, you know, mm -hmm. we've seen that in all sports. And when you finally get a legitimate uh, replication of, of, of an athlete's physical ability by an actor, then, you know, I, like, I, I thought Kevin Costner and Bull Durham was believable. But then you had uh, the Jimmy Pearsall story. Anthony yep. Perkins. Anthony Perkins. Horrible. Well, but he I like a I, girl. Yeah, but he's left-handed. I know. He, but he had to throw right-handed, and, you know, and you better watch it about throwing like a girl. Shelley well, Zimmerman. He throws like a girl because I played with a lot of girls back in Illinois, and he threw like a girl. <laughs> well, <laughs> what? <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Not like Jenny. Boy, Finch. you jumped all over that, didn't Not you? Not like I mean, Jenny. He, Finch, he was loaded up for that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know it was teed it up. He <laughs> <It> was. <laughs> One and one to Norris. The runner goes, and a ground ball through the right side. Perfect hit and run. And first and third for the Padres with no one out as Norris executes that perfectly. Well, perfect situation. You got a strike thrower out there on the mound, and Derek Norris sometimes as a hitter to put him in a hit and run mode. It's easier to make contact. You're starting to think about hitting the ball on the ground and taking the ball the opposite way, and it's just perfectly executed right there. That was a great angle. You could see the second baseman, LeMahieu, he was going to cover. There was a big hole there anyway, but that made it uh, 90 feet to shoot at, and Norris carves that one into right field, sends Upton over to third. The Padres a chance to add to their 3 nothing lead. Here's Ramirez. He doubled to right center his first time. Infield back. Good trade to run for a double play. Yeah, you could see him really trying to work his hands inside that baseball. That same approach on his first hit. An RBI situation tried to elevate this baseball into the outfield. Padres at the corners. No one out here in the fourth. And Nick Huntley wants to talk to his pitcher. 
That'll give us a chance to remind you tomorrow night's game at 7:10 start. That means 6:30 here on Fox Sports San Diego for Padres Live, the pregame show. It'll be Andrew Kashner for San Diego against right-hander Chad Bettis. He's had some good outings this year, Bettis. He's four and four. Strikes now on Ramirez with Adam Rosales to follow. Here's Rosales. This day in history had some interesting notes. June 6th, including the first time that. Baseball fans were able to open a newspaper and read Casey at the bat. And that was a few years back as that one is a delayed called strike three on Ramirez. First strikeout for Russin. So let me guess. At the end of that story, there was no joy in Mudville. That's right. And Ernest L. Thayer wrote it for the San Francisco Examiner newspaper and he thought it was such terrible poetry didn't even use his name on it just used the pseudonym wow. because he was embarrassed by it if they're going to print that oh that's rotten stuff that's one of the most famous <laughs> baseball poems ever Casey at the man then later did he say hey well, well, well wait a minute I, I did write that <laughs> well he, he cleared up the uh, issue that's for certain he used P H I N as his uh, pen name Finn. And this one will live June 3rd in 1956 in Santa Cruz, California. The community banned rock and roll. No rock and roll. How do you do that? Rock and roll will never die. Rosales checks the swing. The answer to why they banned it, it's detrimental to both the health and morals of our youth, rock and roll. You know, that was the yeah, Elvis. <laughs> Elvis Presley and too much shaking going on. <laughs> well, we've come a long way from that oh, yeah. pelvic move, huh? <laughs> 2 and 0 to Rosales. Trying to rock and roll and got a pitch to hit. Well, I have a confession because I didn't think it was great when I first wrote it, but I wrote Warren Peace under the name of Leo Tolstoy, but I didn't want to tell anybody, so. I really wrote okay. one piece. Okay, Leo. I just didn't think it was going to. The only thing, thing is, you spelled peace P I E C E, and that was the giveaway. <laughs> and W O R E. That's <laughs> yeah, a nice little you know, bedtime reading. You put one of those away in a couple of hours. Makes a good doorstop. Yeah. Garage stop. Action pitch two and one to Rosales. Runners at first and third. One out here in the fourth. Pitcher up next. Russell taking his time now. Mm. Off speed. Change up pad. Rosales out in front. You know what, Mark? Uh, you look at Russ and he's got a quick arm. Yeah. And even on that changeup, I think that's what sells that changeup nicely. Yeah, athletic delivery, and you can see him really speed up his arm on that changeup, especially. So many of those pitchers that try to get a feel for the changeup, you'll see them slow their arm up, and the hitters adjust to that very easily. Inside, full count. Boy, that's got to be a tough pitch to lay off of. It's that sweeping breaking ball that you think that might catch an inside corner, but very inviting pitch to try to to hack at. Infield trying to bail Russin out with a double play with one out. Runners at first and third. Yeah, cut fastball that last pitch. Low ball four and the bases are loaded. That'll bring up Pomerantz again with a runner at third and less than two outs, as was the case in the second inning when he grounded out. Our rooftop shot brought to you by Pinnacle on the Park. 
So a couple of walks from Russell here in the fourth inning. Upton with a leadoff walk, Norris with a single or a hit and run. And let's see if Pomeranz can help himself. First baseman Reynolds camps in on the grass. Arenado bag high at third. A lot of pitchers like to throw that breaking ball early. Here comes the runner to the plate, the throw to the plate, and he is safe. Oh, my. Upton steals home. Not only a great break by Upton, but what a slide using his hand to the inside to hit the dish. What the Jackie Robinson is going on? That was sweet. An incredible slide, too. Watch the slide inside, and he used his left hand to reach back. Pretty incredible, the slide, and you see the tag by Hunley going over that. Wow. It's his best matrix <laughs> move ever. His 12th steal of the season. He's among the league leaders, and how long has it been since a Padre on a legitimate steal, not a double steal, has pilfered home base? Oh, my, Melvin Upton. 4 nothing Padre. Well, you got to credit the scouting reports, too, on that. They must have seen something on Russin to be able to do that. See, he went to that windup with the bases loaded. And his back is pretty much turned towards third base on that windup. Yeah, being a left-hander helps, doesn't it? You know, it's almost like he uses right arm to stop and change direction so he could touch home plate with his left hand. That was remarkable. So runners first and second, and again Pomerantz a swing and a miss. It's one and two. <laughs> so much easier to take those opportunities, especially with a three-run lead. The Melvin was creeping just a little bit. That's the problem with the pitch count here. Down the middle. And uh, apparently the scoreboard was wrong and. Uh, that was strike three. No one quite certain about it. Also, two outs as we check our Bill Howe play of the game. Here it comes, steal of home. They see Melvin creeping down, and the timing aspect of this was very good. Watch that right hand. He stops it like Mark talked about, and the left hand touches home plate. Hmm. The last time I rec recalled, Everett Cabrera against the Dodgers stole home, and here is John Jay making the final out of the inning. So had he not tried to steal, the Padres would have come up empty in the inning. So Melvin Upton adds to the lead 4 nothing. A rare steal of home base. Great moments in All-Star history brought to you by Geico, Cleveland's Jacob Field, 1997. Larry Walker, a bit of All-Star levity, facing Randy Johnson. He's not going to go up there left-handed. Turns it around right-handed. <laughs> Randy Johnson uh, even had a smile, and it's tough to get the big left-hander to do that. 
Yeah, the funny thing is Larry Walker and Randy Johnson were teammates coming up in the Montreal <laughs> Expos organization. So the Padres adding to their lead 4 nothing as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Oh, look at those seats. You look Sh at them. Should I? <laughs> Showed them before the game. You got a big screen TV right there to watch the game live and then you've got replays. You've got snacks. You could call that the best seat in the Hold house. Hold on, I'm getting a text, Dick. Oh, Hold sorry. on. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Don't let the game get in your way. Here's Nick Hundley struck out the first time. Pomerantz has four strikeouts, a couple of walks, only one scratch hit. You know, you're looking through the media guy for the Padres. That Cabrera steal in Los Angeles, I thought it was two years ago. That's been four it's years since he did that. That was a huge play that year, it too. Was, it was that one. I picked that the highlight play of the it entire was. season. Fouled by Hundley. And you look back. Steal of home in a double steal. July 6th, 2005. Mark Sweeney wow. at Houston. Wow. Speed kills. <laughs> you still I had, home? I had to ice my hamstring Double for steel. like three weeks after that. <laughs> still though, that's pretty cool. Had to take advantage of what I saw. To have that on your resume. Hundley and sorry about it. Right center field. Jay gets there quickly, always gets that terrific break. That's the first out here in the fifth inning. Who was pitching, Mark Sweeney? I don't remember that. You don't remember? No, I don't remember what I had for breakfast today. If I stole home, I would remember who was on the hill. I do you I mean, really you don't never remember stole it. home? Never Wait, let me look at the book. Maybe no. it's in there. I, I, I never stole home. Not even high school? They DH for me in high school. Oh, I can't believe that. I know. You had good speed, though. I could run. That's one thing I will say. I could run. Your mother would attest to that. What's that, Dick? I'm Your sorry. Your mother would attest to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Didn't you have a race in spring training? I though? did. Thanks for bringing that up again. Well, what happened on that race? Blew up my hammy and my quad. All at once. <laughs> Russ and the pitcher is up. Trying to race Dave Roberts in the 40. Yeah. That was a smart move. Peoria. Didn't you pinch run once for Bruce I Bochy? I did for Bruce Bochy. What happened that time? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> See? So nothing good, huh? You should remember those things. I, know, I can't remember. How does that happen? I don't know. One and one to Russin. Boy, he takes a good whack at it, doesn't he? One and two. Gosh, that's an exciting play. Melvin Upton Jr. We're going to be seeing a lot of that. Yeah. That's a highlight reel. And not only the fact that timing the break, but that slide to manufacture illusion and uh, it almost was like he swam his way over home plate. He yeah. gave the right hand and took the left. Yeah. It was. It was the Matrix. It's, look at what I just wrote down. Well, I wanted you to say because that's your famous line. <laughs> Famous. Well, yeah, you say it all the time, and it's a great line doing the Matrix. It's what amazes me, <laughs> right? Yeah, definitely. Oh, <laughs> back. Oh, well, and watch it, how he has to do so this is reaction. Right hand pulls it away and hits it with the left. Huntley Ob went for the right hand. Obviously, you want to slide in on the inside part of the home plate because that's the furthest away from the catcher. He has to receive the pitch. Hey, and you know, kudos to the home plate umpire, Paul Emmel. He was in a great spot. Had the eagle eye on it, and he made the right call. I mean, that's, you got to watch glove. You got to watch the player touch the plate. A lot going on there, and he got it right. Mm -hmm. yeah, we've had some interesting uh, moments provided by Melvin Upton the last two games. There's a swing and a miss, and that's the fifth strikeout for Pomerantz. Last night, Melvin frustrated by Striking out, snapping the bat over his thighs. And tonight, stealing home. Mm. Oh, foul tip and a nice job by Norris to hang on. Top of the order, Charlie Blackman. So five innings, five strikeouts. Pomerantz has been on that pace all season long. Blackman is flying to left and walked. Spins one in. Batters 
against Pomerantz hitting only 172 coming in. They have only one hit tonight. Well, he's got the feel for that curveball too. You know, what fascinates me too of the different shapes that he has of the mm -hmm. curveball. And yes, he's a two pitch pitcher. You know he has that changeup. But the, the illusion of how he shapes that and still maintains arm speed is really impressive. Yeah, and I think what you're trying to say, Mark, is like the first two curveballs here, they were kind of like, I don't want to say hit me curveball, but he might spike one right here in the dirt, like a firm one. Misses low and away, two and two. That one didn't have the, the big uh, as break. Yeah, that had a slider it. action right. to it. That's nice. in there. Strike three. A couple more punch outs. Six in the game for Pomerantz. One, two, three go the Rockies. We're at the halfway mark in this one. Four and a half innings in the book. The Padres leading four nothing. It'll be Myers, Kemp, and Salarte in the home half of the inning. Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Inside the National League, Yasiel Puig has been placed on the 15-day DL with a hamstring. Hunter Pence also with a hamstring. He's out of commission for 15. And Miggy Cabrera, day-to-day -day with back tightness. He could go up in a wheelchair and hit a home run. Yeah, that Hunter Pence injury is pretty interesting. Mm. They say two months and... Hunter Ooh. Pence's reaction was possibly longer than that. Somebody told me today that it, it tore from the bone. Yeah, oh, that's not that's not good. That's a big loss. I mean, there is Myers clubbing one to left, but right to the left fielder Rayburn for the out. That'll bring up Kemp, the three-run homer, a record tying in distance here at Petco Park, 458 feet, the three-run shot in the first, and then he. Lined one sharply to Rayburn and left the last time up. Four nothing Padres. Three of them on Kemp's 14th homer of the year. The other on the steal of home by Melvin Hupton. That's the first of nine games in succession with teams that don't have winning records. And maybe this is the time for the Padres to turn things around, put together a winning streak. Three with the Rockies. And three with Atlanta here at home, and then back up to Colorado for three. Yep. And Jay there with Coach Eddie Rodriguez. One and one. Well, the success that Matt Kemp's had against the Colorado Rockies. Now it's time to look for continued mistakes. This is when you worry about. A hitter that's had such success. Ground ball, but it's right there, Renato. That backhand, a beauty, and the throw across in time. 
A lot of third baseman. That's a double into the left field corner. Two outs to Salarte. Well, you see this, and Chris Russin is trying to change things up, and he throws that change up. But what was interesting about it, he worked every pitch away, but he quickened his delivery up to Matt Camp, just giving him a different look. Salarte so up twice, is grounded out twice. Well, some hitters will see quick delivery; they think it's a probably a fastball. Breaking ball, strike to Salarte. Now well, the word on Cesar Vargas. He'll be on the DL now for an estimated three weeks with a flexor strain. The good news is it's not the ligament of his right arm. MRI taken this week. Oh boy, Salarte pounds that one off his shins. Right off the instant. Hmm. Trainer Paul Navarro out with manager Green. I'm sure you had a few of those, Mark Sweeney. They're the worst. It's right on that bone protrudes right. There's just a little skin over yeah. that. And I'll tell you this, I mean you see all the body armor that happens throughout the game. And a lot of hit, a lot of hitters would talk about this how they didn't like wearing one of those because they didn't want to show that that happens a lot you know as you know as a pitcher you're going to probably get fastballs in the cutters the chain the different changes it does not feel good and then it's trying to get that feeling back in your foot There's really not much you can do for it they don't use that uh no pain spray anymore, do no. they? They used to come out and spray that, try to numb the area. Yeah, the stuff that doesn't make you feel that good. <laughs> <laughs> so two strikes on Salarte, and he sends one high in the air to right center. Long run. Blackman's there, and a one-two-three inning for Russin and the Rockies. Five complete. Padres with a four-nothing advantage. This game summary features a couple of big moments. The long, long home run by Kemp, tying Adrian Gonzalez, the longest ever at Petco Park. And then the steal of home, a rare move of daring by Melvin Upton, and a terrific tag of home plate with a left hand. And the Padres have 4 0. Three on the home run, and the fourth on Upton steal. That alone's enough to go home and talk about, huh? Yes. Over the Breakfast table tomorrow morning. Top of the six, Pomeran so far giving the Padres just what they needed. A rest for the bullpen, trying to go deep into this game. He's allowed only one hit, and that was the infield swinging bunt by Arenado. He struck out six, and he's walked two. 
Well, we make some quick pitches here, get into the seventh, and you know what? If things go right, just maybe, maybe into the eighth. A lot of foul balls. That was pitch number 84. And now it's getting close to 90. You get up towards 100. He needs a couple of quick innings right here. Well, we've seen Drew Pomeranz on the year go 111 pitches twice. I think it's pretty interesting and probably in the mind of Andy Green. That's a pretty good pitch. No call. Two and one. LeMahieu, Arenado, and Rayburn. Two, three, and four in the lineup for Walt Weiss here in the sixth inning. One hopper and Rosales there to squeeze it and throw him out. Eight in a row now retired by Pomerantz. You know, guys, you take a look at some of the characteristics of pitchers. The simple delivery. Chris Russell on the left side. You see just a step back and then the delivery. And then also a Drew Pomerantz working from the first base side of the rubber. Just a simple step and then the delivery there. Two similar styles. Not the same way they pitch, but... Definitely the same windups. Arenado, the National League home run and RBI leader. You know, it's almost as if they're going from the stretch the yeah. whole time. And you know what? I've been, a, I'm showing my age here, but if you've got a big frame like a Pomerantz, and don't get me wrong, he's pitching extremely well. Don't change a thing. I've always liked the idea of the old shoot rock fire, get that body in motion and get towards home plate. Hey, if Drew Pomerantz feels comfortable doing that, and the results obviously prove that, hey, stick with it. Don't change a thing. Well, we even saw Andrew Kastner try that in yeah. spring training, trying to simplify his delivery. Low 2-0. Oh. Thinking back, you know, where the windup, I, I remember where most of the pitchers, they'd go into windup and give the full circle with the pitching arm oh, and yeah. then come in and then throw. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the early 1950s, Don Larson went from the no windup. That was right. so shocking. Ground ball to third, right at Solarte, and he takes care of of Arenado, nine straight retired by Pomerantz. Well, let's take a look at the pitch by pitch to Matt Kemp and the deliveries of Chris Russin. Just the normal delivery, easy slide step that he sees, a simple delivery. Then this one, he ends up quick pitching, getting Matt Kemp on the changeup out front. But that quick pitch really changed a different look by Chris Russin. It's going Johnny Cueto on him. Yeah. Brian Rayburn hitting cleanup has flied out twice. To right and to left. Did you try that, Mark? The quick pitch? And I did later after I was hurt in the minor leagues trying to make it back. I had so much fun. I mean, you know, we've talked about this before where you're young and you make it to the big leagues. If you divert from your success in the minors of the big leagues, you're thinking, oh, I'm not doing enough, right? Yeah. But as I got older and got hurt, and then I made it. To triple A again with the Cubs. I'm going to drop down here and throw the slider. I'm going to quick pitch, guys. I'm going to, you know, get the signage like the Don Larson thing. Just step and throw. Have some fun with it. I wish I would have done that earlier in my career. Yeah. But see, if you do that and you don't have success, you blame yourself. Oh, I, I got to stick with my strengths. Swing and a miss. There's the strength of Drew Pomerantz. Another strikeout is seventh tonight. And he's gone through six innings of shutout ball, allowing one scratch hit. Padres four, Rockies nil.
Padres lead 4-0, and Melvin Upton will lead it off for San Diego. And it's interesting that here on San Diego Police Department night, Melvin Upton would steal home yeah. and get away with it. <laughs> All the policemen here to watch. And he drills this one, but it's dying in shallow right, and Parra over in front of Blackman to make the catch. Dying fly ball. Well, who are the top third baseman, the hot corner men here in the National. Let's go back two years. Last year, this year, there are the numbers. Boy, hard to separate them. Which one would you take? Well, it's uh, it's pretty much a pick 'em. I know each guy has their own individual uh, pluses and uh, not really many minuses there. And you know, because Arenado's here, I'm going to go with Manny Machado. I know this is going to be a discussion uh, tomorrow on Inside Corner, right, yep. Mark Sweeney? Yep. So I just gave you know what I just gave away money unless you picked him. No, you know what Machado is is finally healthy. Yeah, he's playing shortstop now. I think he's fabulous at third base. I still think it's Arenado yeah. right now. I really do. The difference maker, obviously Josh Donaldson, MVP last year. Hard to disagree with that, and also Adrian Beltre, the gold standard of third base yeah, in this he's, game. He's like 46 years old now, isn't he? <laughs> 177 hits away from 3,000 for Adrian Beltre. Yeah, he's uh, flirting with uh, Cooperstown bid. Mm -hmm. Ground ball. Yeah, you don't get away with it when you hit it to that man. Arenado gets him by a half step. No, oh, two quick outs here in the Padres sixth. Hit sharply, so he has plenty of time. Go crow hop. Up the line a little bit when stays on the bag nicely. That'll bring up Alexei Ramirez, a double his first time, took a third strike the last. Where were you in uh, 1995, Mark Grant? I was in Des Moines with the Cubs. Uh, how about you, Sweens? 95, I was uh, in two places. I was in Vancouver, got traded over to St. Louis Cardinals. The Coup. And um, then got to the big leagues in August. With whom? With the St. Louis Cardinals. Oh, with the Cardinals. So neither of you were with the Padres on this night in 1995 when Pedro Martinez had a perfect game through nine. Oh, that's right. Ground ball again, Arenado. They keep testing him and he keeps making the plays. Another one, two, three inning after six, four nothing. Four nothing. Our Ram trucks tools of the trade. Mark Grant. Well, let's go back to April 9th in Colorado. Drew Pomerantz against Trevor Story. Look at the strikeouts here. The breaking ball expanding the zone, going down and in for the kill right there. And Trevor Story, we know all about the start that he had. All those home runs on it early in the season, but Drew Pomerantz just diced and sliced. And then what do you put him away with? Well, there's a fastball out of the zone by design. There's the fastball and tying him up. Can't get extended. Two strikeouts against Trevor Story. One in the first and the second one in the third inning. 
And it's Story who leads here in the top of the seventh inning. Another brilliant outing from Drew Pomerantz, bouncing back from his only bad outing in Arizona last time out. Tonight, just one hit, and that was a swinging bunt single by Nolan Arenado. He's walked two and struck out seven. He's retired the last ten in a row since the infield hit by Arenado back in the third. Story is flied out and struck out. Reynolds and Parra to follow. Well, he's got the feel for that number two tonight. That curveball is working nicely for Drew Pomerantz. 94 pitches and trying to get through this seventh inning, saving the bullpen tonight. Hey, if he throws very few pitches this inning, why not send him back out there for the eighth? Right center field that's aimed for the gap and nice play by Kemp to cut it off and story will be held to a long single second hit of the night for the Rockies time now for the in the driver's seat brought to you by Kia and in the driver's seat through six innings is Drew Pomerantz now the second hit working on the shutout couple of walks and seven strikeouts Boy, would a double play be nice right here. That was an 0 2. 0 2 hit. You saw Pomerantz kind of tap his yeah. letters on his chest as if to say that's on me. Too Absolutely. good a pitch. Absolutely. Mark Reynolds safe on an error by the third baseman mm -hmm. Salarte. He struck out the last time. Always been a power threat, Reynolds, but also has struck out more than a normal share. In fact, uh, led the league several times in striking out. Cut that down this year. Late there on the swing, 0 and 2. And there are three years in a row where he averaged. Well over 200 strikeouts per season make it four years in a row with uh, Arizona with a high of 223 punch outs back in 2009. Hey, you know I know all the focus right now is on that kid right there Drew Pomerantz but credit Derek Norris behind home plate calling one heck of a game. He's the quarterback out there. He's the Philip Rivers. He's the John Elway. Calling the signals and doing a good job along with Drew Pomerantz. Not a lot of shaking off going on. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Eight punch outs now for the left hander Pomerantz. One away here in the seventh. Follow Padres Baseball Live with the MLB.com at bat app. Stay up the moment and any moment with game day, live game, video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Interestingly, a eight strikeouts, seven of them are swinging. Para has walked and struck out. Outside. Let's check our Cholula flamethrower, Mark. Well, with Drew Pomerantz on the mound, he's not going to throw 97 98, but I tell you what, effective at 93, and that is A OK. And that's hot sauce, as far as I'm concerned, because it's been hot results so far for this point for Drew. Just two hits allowed, including the single by Story leading off the seventh. Swing and a miss, Paro, one and one. The left hander is dealing. Dodgers are leading Atlanta 3 2 in the seventh at Dodger Stadium tonight. Arizona shut out by the Cubs 6 0. San Francisco beat St. Louis 5 1 at St. Louis. Runner goes. Throw by Norris, and he is out of there. Ramirez doing a great job of hanging on to the ball and hanging on to contact with a sliding Trevor Story.
the pick, the whiff, but the overslide. Alexei, go get him. Hello. Anybody want to come in? Got here? him. <laughs> right in the chin. So two outs. It was a ball on the pitch, so two and one the count. The thoughts of challenge, but they're convinced that indeed Story didn't get his hand or hand back on the bag in time. What a great throw. What a great pick all the way around. Bunted foul. It's twice now that Paro has tried to bunt his way on. The attendance tonight 21,588. Room for here, you here tomorrow night. 7 10 game will be on the air at 6 30. Kashner against Bettis. Don't forget Sunday, it's a later game than normal. Full count. Because of the rock and roll marathon here in San Diego, the usual 1 o'clock, 1 30 time, they push that down to 6 10 start. With Shields and John Gray matching up in the Sunday finale of the series. Roll to the first baseman Myers. The rest is easy. And that's it in the top of the seventh inning. Stretch half of the seventh in the finest city in the U.S. of A. Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Saquon Casino. Sign up for the new Padres club card today. By Jack in the Box, taste the portobello mushroom buttery Jack before it's gone. And by Mercury Insurance, we're on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com today. Well, Drew Pomerantz getting handshakes around as he left after the top of the seventh inning. Seven innings of shutout work, only two hits, two walks, and eight strikeouts for the left-hander, and he'll continue to improve that great record, the ERA and the batting average against. 172 was the third best in the National League, and he allowed only two hits in seven innings tonight. Incomplete control, and that's exactly what Andy Green and his Padres needed. Still time to add on for nothing Padres, so my goodness, after what we've seen, the yeah, use of the right. bullpen, right? And what we saw last night, you never have enough runs, do you? Yeah, absolutely. Rosales, the pitcher's spot. And then the leadoff hitter, Jay, here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Christian Bethencourt is in the on deck circle, and apparently he'll hit for Pomerantz. Pretty simple summary of the game's action. A three-run homer in the first inning for Matt Kemp. A long distance 
shot that equals the longest ever hit here at Petco Park. If Jay had singled and Myers was safe on an air and Kemp came up on the first pitch and made it a three nothing game early and the other run scored on a daring steal of home by Melvin Upton. We saw Ryan Bookter up in the pen for San Diego the left hander. After that left hander Drew Pomerantz twirled the gem. Rosales has walked and flied out. And down he goes swinging. Well the news has now hit the uh, nation's headlines. We'll share it with you in a minute. Third strikeout for Russin. He's pitched a good game. Just the sure. one mistake. The home run to Kemp. Bethancourt has grounded out and struck out. As the season has developed, so has the talent shown of this young man. He's going to be a valuable addition to the roster and good power. And a tremendous throwing arm. They showed that as an emergency pitcher. And they're going to continue to work him out in left field, third base. Catcher, of course, his position, but make him all the more valuable. Two and one. Padres have only four hits off Russin, but the one big one, the first inning home run off the bat of Matt Kemp to give the Padres that early 3 0 lead. Ramirez with a double, Norris with a hit and run single, and John Jay, first inning single, the other hits. Swing and a miss, two and two. Well, that sneaky fast fastball, 89 90. Set up by the changeup, the breaky ball from Chris Russin. Nine again. Pomerantz tonight, seven innings, two hits, two walks, eight strikeouts, 105 pitches for Drew, standing to win his fifth game of the year. It's interesting, in three years in Colorado, and no pitcher really enjoys working up at Coors Field. He won a total of four games in three years, yep. looking to win his fifth here in a couple of months with the Padres. And sometimes, more than not, you're beaten even before you take them out up there in Colorado. It just affects guys that way. Well, and then they had, while he was there, that ridiculous 75 pitch rule, remember? Exactly. That didn't make anyone happy. You'd be pitching a good game and they get to 75 pitches in the sixth inning. You're out of there, kid. Yeah, the old piggyback system where they would rotate those, you know, they'd have that rotation, then they'd have guys rotate the bullpen, picking up the the starter that particular night. That went over well. Yeah, didn't it? And has used only 85 pitches to get uh, one out into the seventh inning. Hangs outside, full count. He's walked a couple, and he has struck out three. High fly ball to right, easing toward the line is Para. Two away. And a reminder that our game is presented in HD by Sony. Nine in a row retired now by Chris Russin as he goes to the top of the order and John Jay. Single and three trips for the Padre leadoff man. Needs one more base hit to tie the Padre record for most hits in a three game set, three consecutive games of 11. Single and a couple of ground outs tonight. He's been swinging early during this streak as well. He's getting a first pitch fastball, he's attacking it. Quick pitch. One and one. Well, Mark Sweeney mentioned that earlier about Chris Russin how sometimes he'll even change it up not even out of the hand but with his delivery with that quick pitch. 
That's a slow roller to LeMayhew and an easy final out. So that's three consecutive innings of one, two, three pitching by Chris Russ, and we're on to the eighth. It's a 4 nothing Padre lead over the Colorado Rockies. Mark Sweeney and I working on Padres Live, the postgame show, which will be brought to you by Cox Communication. Great job by Drew Pomeranz. We'll talk about that in the postgame show, but tonight, right now, an opportunity for the bullpen to redeem itself. Well, you got to back that start. It starts with Ryan Buchter that's going to start this inning. 34 pitches last night. Look for them to piece that together. They need to finish this game. When Mark and I see you after the final out, we'll talk about everything that happened here and Matt Kemp's prodigious home run also as Dick and Mark have mentioned and daring steal of home plate by Melvin Upton Jr. So we'll have all that for you plus Andy Green and a whole lot more when we see you after the ball game this evening. Dick and Mark. All right Mike and Mark here's our pitching change brought to you by El Cajon Ford. Bookter takes the hill here in the eighth inning trying to serve out the final inning maybe two four nothing Padre lead. Nick Hundley leads it off for the Rockies a swing and a miss. He has struck out and fly to center. Well, Ryan pitched yesterday against the Mariners two thirds, and it was kind of a rough one. A couple of hits, four runs, four earned runs, but a heavy workload into the 30s as far as pitches were concerned. So hopefully he bounces back nicely tonight here and throws up a zero to preserve the 4 nothing lead. Just off the edge, one and one. Boy, the control was off. Just uh, he only walked one, but, you know, control in the zone as well. Kind of wild in the zone. High fly ball. That's hooking toward the souvenir corner and up then can't reach that far. <laughs> Ramirez <laughs> gets the carom. <laughs> Why do I find that so funny? Yeah, it's just the fact that he <laughs> can have a light moment here in he the middle of the ball it. game. I love it. Third base umpire Mike <laughs> Everett, the crew chief. Okay, here's the bounce. <laughs> you know, Alexei. <laughs> yeah, the umpire's down there. <laughs> so a ball, two strikes on Hundley. Popped up. This should be playable for Myers as he edges across the foul line and makes the catch in foul territory for the first down. And the pinch hitter is uh, Christian Adamas. Utility infielder for the Rockies. As he hits for Russin. Russin pitched well enough. That one huge mistake that Resulted in a huge home run. Chris Russin uh, taken deep by Matt Kemp, but he goes seven innings, four runs, only four hits, a couple of walks, and three strikeouts. Fire. 
Adamas on the year, the switch hitter, hitting 245, only 49 at bats as a right handed batter, 3 for 11. One and one. After Adamas, the lead off man, Charlie Blackman. In there. 90 mile an hour fastball strike. Well, as a reliever, you got to erase it. You get a chance. That's the beauty of being a reliever. You wear the nails out there to the bullpen with a chance of getting in a game after you have a rough one. As a starter, you got to wait four days. And that's the beauty about being a reliever, how you can quickly turn around your game the next night. Last night in two thirds of an inning, four runs. Couple of hits. Line drive at Kemp for an out. The Adam ball working for Ryan Victor, the second out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Top of the order, Blackman is flight out, walked, and took a third strike the last time facing Drew Pomerantz. Skips that one in ball one. Tomorrow night, Cashner two and five against Bettis four and four. Sunday, remember again a 6 10 game Sunday. Shields against Gray, John Gray. Popped up, right side. Meyer said, I've got a bigger glove, and he takes care of it. A 1 2 3 inning for Ryan Buchter. Well, I regret having to say this. The champion is gone. Muhammad Ali at age 74 has passed away today. One of the greatest athletes in the history of sport, more than just his accomplishments in the ring. Farewell, Ali. As they come up to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning, a reminder that on the postgame show, uh, Mike and Mark, uh, they're going to have a tribute to Muhammad Ali. You know, the thing, not only was he a you know, flamboyant character and, and you had to identify he was different from the rest. So those quick hands and the dancing and the, the great talent, but he really felt a social responsibility, took an incredible stance against the Vietnam yeah, War. Absolutely, yep. At the time he was champion, they took his uh, belt away. Uh, 
Bud Collins, I'm going back to Boston for his funeral, his uh, celebration of life in a couple of weeks, and he told a wonderful story when he was down in Florida uh, with Ali training for a championship fight that was being held in New York and rode in the bus with Ali and his entourage in a school bus mm -hmm. back north as Myers follows that away. And they would go through some of the small towns in the South, South Carolina, and Ali would say, stop the bus, stop the bus, and they'd pull into a little town and there'd be little kids playing in the street and the champ would get out yeah. of the bus and walk out and shake the kids' hands and give them, I mean, it, he was that kind of man. And I, he really felt sincerely that he had to be good as well as great. There was a great documentary about him. He had his training quarters. It was in, like in a little town somewhere, in, in this little shack somewhere, and they would invite the public to come and watch him train in the way that he would interact. The guy was the Pied Piper. He I mean, really was. The, the younger generation, the young kids, he really made them feel wanted and accepted. And, you know, he'd give a wink or he'd, uh, he'd you know, tell a little joke or something, but put little kids especially at ease and, and just made them feel good. I mean, didn't you do the, did you I, do I the did. thrill in Manila? Uh, no, I did the fight in Munich, Germany against Germany. Richard, uh, Richard Dunn, a Weltzman. Uh, the Louisville Lip, I mean, when you think about it now, that seems so unkind to have called him that. But he was, you know, with all the poetry and float like a, sure. uh, whatever, a bumblebee or butterfly, sting like a bee sting like and a float bee, like yeah. a butterfly, sting like a bee. He was the greatest. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, the, the one shot, the famous shot when he knocked out Sonny Liston, you know that, that shot, classic when he, shot when he yeah. gives the, uh, the pump of the fist? If you watch that clip in real time, that photographer had it going that night. All yeah. the all the moon moons and stars were aligned because you cannot in real time on film. You cannot. He is so quick. Camp hits this one, but got under it. That would have been gone, long gone. But more high than long, and the second out. Because I remember seeing that clip, and I remember the picture, and I was like, wait, wait. How did they capture that on film? And that was before the clear. You had exactly. multiple shots. You had to take the one shot. It happened so quickly. I wonder if we yes. have that. I wonder if you have that shot. I'll bet Max Mitchell, like he's going through the research files, will come up with it. And we, there it is. That's the one I'm, I'm talking that's, about. That's now, one of the great shots in boxing uh, history. When you watch that real time on film, you you it, it's a, it's you can't see it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That Sonny Liston in Lewiston, Maine, was it not? I think so. And many felt that Lewis uh, or that. Um, Liston dumped the fight. He lost it in the first round. There was a lot of religious things, Muslim action around it, and uh, there was some fear that something more than a boxing match might happen. But uh, that's not true at all. Dick Braden, a famous tennis mm -hmm. teacher, went back and studied the film of that fight, and he said that the punch by Ali was only about six inches, but it was just the perfect time that Liston was here and right. met the punch. You know, a, ho a home run punch isn't that one. It's this one with a body behind it. He said it measured at more than a thousand pounds on contact. And Liston <laughs> did wow. go down. Yeah. And you know what? Fight. I'm, I'm not going to say I was a huge boxing guy, but back in the day when I was growing up in the late 60s, early 70s, the big boxing match was the huge boxing match. Now they're all over the place. Right. They got the different. It's the Friday night fight. Exactly. I mean, when, Don when there, Dunphy. When there was an Ali fight, or whether it was Norton and Frazier, or you know Hagler, uh, whoever it was, uh, th those were the names, man. When I was growing up, that you you didn't have to be a big boxing fan, but you watched those fights. Yeah. Well, he he was the greatest, mm -hmm. and, and we were lucky enough to rub shoulders with him. Yeah, you were very lucky to, to know him. I was. I remember a banquet in New York. He was the honored guest of Sportscasters the annual banquet. Lou Schwartz, uh, the president, we were able to uh, have seven, eight hundred people and had a great dais. And Ali was there and I was sitting next to him and he couldn't eat his meal. Everyone coming up to you him, know, these are all grown men in tuxedos sure. and all asked, could you know, would you sign this, would you sign this? And I said, hey champ, you know, I can I can chase them away. You, you haven't had a chance to even eat your meal. He said, I'll sign them all. Doesn't surprise me. Taken and Huntley oh. thought he had strike three and Fox tracks uh, by Nissan said it certainly looked like that but not in the eyes of Paul Emmel. I guess down the middle doesn't count. Uh, we saw this last night. Remember that pitch to Derek Norris? I thought it was the end of the game right down the middle with the breaking ball. Not the case. So bases empty, two outs here in the eighth inning. 
And the 3 2 pitch now to Salarte. And ball four. And a, another incident in, in a way from long range I was personally involved was in the Olympic Games in Atlanta in 1996 when we didn't know who was going to light the torch. And even though we were covering it, Bob Costas and myself, the opening ceremonies, they wouldn't tell us. Even the network didn't know who was going to finally light the torch. And Ali came out and because of his Parkinson's disease. Right. And remember how he was shaking the torch? We were afraid he was going to light himself a fire. And uh, and you know there wasn't time to write a preparation for all of that. And fortunately, I knew enough about him that I was able to say, you know, the reason why shaky with that torch is because of the Parkinson. And it was uh, certainly a memorable moment. I remember his entourage calling me. After the Olympics, and saying the champ appreciated that you explained why uh, sure. he was in the condition that he was. Perdomo and uh, Villanueva warming up with a safe situation, not in order. Rodney uh, will not uh, will not be in in the ninth inning. Uh, you probably remember this moment from 1996. There he is. Sure do. Still photo. In Atlanta, correct? Mm hmm. Runner goes, swing and a miss. The throw to second is into center field. Now the throw from center field to third, not in time. Solarte replaced by Jankowski, and Jankowski sprinting around the bases like a young deer. Stolen base and an air Hundley to get him to third. It's never too late to add on, especially what we've seen the last couple days. Jankowski, the head first slide. Who says you can't do the pop up slide when you do the head first slide? Puts it in gear again. <laughs> <laughs> so with two outs, Jankowski perched at third and Melvin Upton the chance to add to the 4 0 lead. Oh and two. Upton has popped up, walked and scored, and eventually got around to third on a single by Norris and stole home back in the fourth inning for the fourth Padre run. Well, there's a lot to joy on the postgame show and the Kemp home run, that steal of home so rare. We've got several angles for you, so stay with us after the final out. Softly to right, easy play for Para. And the inning comes to an end. We've completed eight at Petco, and the Padres have a 4 nothing lead. Padres baseball brought to you by San Diego's best window company simply great windows by Petco your complete pet store and by your San Diego County Lexus dealers.
Top of the ninth inning, 4-0 for the home team. Upton being congratulated on that terrific steal of home by Kemp with the three-run homer and the big scoreboard out in left field here at Petco announcing the death of Muhammad Ali tonight with that classic photo. You know, he loved magic. And he always had a couple of magic tricks, especially with kids. Right. He, he would do a little card trick or a little hide the, you know, the right. how they hide the handkerchief or whatever. And he would, oh, he got such great joy out of pulling a magical trick on a young kid. I tell you what, to be in the ring, it was magic too. And you didn't want to see that stinging left jab. Man, he could put tear you apart with that jab. Via Nueva to LeMayhew here to open the ninth inning. Trying to get the final three outs and the first win of this three game series. Rosales moves over to third base and Amarista in at second base here in the ninth. Jammed and foul. Well, Carlos pitched last night in the eighth inning, an inning. One hit, he struck out one Mariner. And with the four run lead, not a safe situation. But Fernando Rodney is still tossing in that poverty bullpen just in case. Well, Mayhew been unlucky tonight. He's hit the ball hard all three times for outs. Inside. Grounded sharply to. Well, actually, a, a slow roller to third in the uh, first inning, and that was a good play made by Solarte to throw him out. Then he lined to right field and smashed one on one hop to the second baseman. Uh, then it was Rosales for an out back in the sixth. Well, he could well be 0 for 3 for 3 instead of uh, wearing the collar. 2 and 2. Big hitters up here in the ninth inning against Villanueva after LeMahieu, Arenado, and Rayburn with uh, Story in the fifth spot. This hot hitting Rockies team, second best in the National League, held the two hits tonight. Oh, hits him. That's not the way to start the ninth inning. That's the last thing in the mind of being away, but to put him on. Well, Carlos has got to hit his spots, and Derek Norris is set up inside. He wants a two seamer in. It leaks on him. And last thing you, you need, and like you said, Dick, is that base runner with the 4 0 lead. Not easy to blank this uh, Rockies team with all their power and. A team 274 average. Padres starting to hand them their second whitewash. Here's Arenado. Infield hit and three at bats. No call. One and oh. Ramirez and Amarista up the middle exchanging conversations. Ramirez is deep into the hole against Arenado, a long way from second base. So what he must have been telling Amarista is if the ball is hit to you you've got to go to the bag yourself mm -hmm. for the double play I can't get all the way from where I am which is closer to third than second. Yeah, and if it's to his left they'll have plenty of time to get over there but. Hey you know what the, the Padre pitching staff has pitched Arenado quite nicely tonight. Kept him in the yard. Both pitches were on the edge but both called as balls by Emil. And now three and zero. Oh. And fans who remember well what happened last night get a little edgy here. As Christian Friedrich, uh, it's his day to throw a bullpen, is in the pen along with Fernando Rodney. There's a strike. Three and one. Mentioning though, there's a a paper out on the warning path at the 396 sign, that, or a ball. I guess somebody lost the ball. On deck is Carlos Gonzalez, given a day off, but uh, he's been hot in the last 11 games. He's hitting 455 with six home runs. 
And kind of a break against the left hander uh, Pomerantz that he isn't in the starting lineup tonight. He's been on a tear. Three and two. Now it's Rayburn on deck, but uh, Gonzalez is there lurking should manager Weiss need to use him. Full count. Number one home run and RBI man in the National League, 25 year old Nolan Arenado. And as we mentioned earlier, second toughest to strike out in the entire league. Popped him up, slicing into foul territory. Myers makes the play. Oh, it helps to be 6 3 with those long arms. Took that one out of the second row. That's a big out. Getting to the farthest point and then extension, as you mentioned, Dick. He's got the big wingspan up against the barrier. That is a big out for Carlos Villanueva and the Padres. Villanueva rallying from being down 3 0 to Arenado. Long arms and a big glove, and there's one away. Rayburn is 0 for 3. Two flyouts and a strikeout. Twenty one thousand five eighty eight treated to a fast paced game tonight. And for the Padre fans and four nothing late here in the ninth. Two. Nice little spinner right there from Villanueva. You mentioned he's not a hard thrower. 88, 89. He's got to hit a spot, but you throw a little wrinkle in there. You mix in a changeup. Still be effective. Take the sting out of that bat. Maybe a little slider away right here. In the dirt, wouldn't bite one and two. Him off the plate, two and two. If you're just joining us, Matt Kemp crushed a three run homer in the first inning. Tied the longest ever hit here at Petco, 458 feet for an early 3 nothing lead, and Melvin Upton stole home for the fourth run in the fourth inning. That's been the offense. Swing and a miss, strike three. Rayburn goes down swinging, and the Rockies are down to their final line. As we check on our Carl's Jr. star of the game, and another star for Drew Pomerantz, a two hit shutout pitching, seven innings, and eight strikeouts. Our Carl's Jr. star of the game, the former Colorado Rocky, finding a happy home here in San Diego. And he was very aggressive in the zone and a solid seven innings and boy do the Padres need this one one out to go here. Power hitting Trevor Story the rookie with. 15 homers take strike one. He's flied out struck out. And single to right field. Well, get me over soft curveball from Villanueva he's got the slide of the fastball. And Story cannot pull the trigger on that one. Ooh, pretty good. 
One and one. Boy, Emil strike zone is shrunk here in the ninth inning. With 15 homers, he's second behind Arenado for the National League home run lead, tied with uh, Cespedes of the Mets. Roll to the right side. Myers races to the bag, and the ball game is over. The Rockies shut out for the second time this year. It's Padres four, Colorado nothing. Here's Mike Pomerantz. Nick, thanks very much. But Mark and I see you at a postgame show. We'll break down all that happened here tonight, and we'll pay tribute to the greatest of all time. We honor Muhammad Ali, who passed away tonight at the age of 74.